Five people are facing charges after a street takeover in Fort Worth ended in a police chase. Good evening, I'm Blake Hansen. Police say several stolen vehicles were involved. Fox Force Alex Boyer spoke with police this afternoon. Alex. Hey, Blake, that's right. You know, in Fort Worth, police tell us that the suspects actually used a key fob programmer to be able to steal the two Dodge vehicles involved in this street takeover. They also tell us that this group is the same organized group that held a street takeover in Austin just a few months ago. Drone video taken by Michael Beard captured some of the chaos caused by a street takeover in Fort Worth Saturday night. Spectators shot off fireworks at one point causing people to scurry as stunters did donuts nearby. You suffer the consequences for the for the games you try to play. Fort Worth police officer Buddy Calzada said they were tipped off that a street takeover might happen, so officers were nearby. Officers were dispatched to a 911 call at the intersection of North Karen Parkway and North North Beach Street, several miles north of downtown. When officers got there, spectators were filming the action. That Dodge Challenger, they were motioning, Alex, motioning for pedestrians to get in the way and get in front of that police vehicle so that we couldn't drive any further. In other words, they're taking your sons and daughters lives at risk by telling them to stand in front of police cars so that we don't move so that they can do their little takeovers. When responding officers arrived, the Dodge Challenger took off. A Richland Hills police lieutenant used a spike strip to disable the car. The suspects got out of the car and into a Dodge Charger. With help from a DPS helicopter, officers were able to locate the Charger hidden underneath this overpass near Highway 121 and South Riverside Drive. We pursued them on foot and uh, we found them all hiding under a vehicle at a uh, at a location nearby. 17-year-old Bruce Camacho, 17-year-old Gustavo Camacho, and 20-year-old Saul Olade are each charged with evading arrest. Gustavo Camacho is also charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, a state jail felony. Police also arrested two minors, but because of their age, their identities are not being released. Officer Calzada said investigators found a key fob programmer inside one of the cars. Turns out both vehicles were stolen and had fake license plates displayed. Calzada called that a big get. It does certain things and specific things to allow them to steal certain vehicles. Well, it's no longer in their hands. It's in our possession. And Calzada added that it seems that more and more of the people that are taking part in these street takeovers appear to be getting younger, and he finds that to be very concerning. Keep in mind that two of the people arrested are juveniles. They now sit in a juvenile detention center, and the three adults are sitting in a city jail. Blake. All right, Alex, thanks. Dallas police are investigating another shooting at a home neighbors say is a short-term rental. Police say they're still looking for the gunman who shot and killed a 19-year-old and wounded three others at a home on Pompano Beach Drive in southern Dallas Saturday evening. The homeowner who lives next door spoke with one of the victims through her ring camera. Fox 4's Lori Brown, live in Dallas. Lori. Clarice, the shooting happened at a short-term rental in a Dallas neighborhood zoned for single families. It's the kind of neighborhood where the Dallas City Council recently voted to ban the revolving door of weekend rentals. But the ordinance will not be enforced until December. My alarm kept going off on my phone that, you know, there was people in my driveway. So when I looked, I saw two people, you know, through my parking lot running off. And then seconds later, I had, you know, my doorbell started ringing. Melissa Vergara told us about the terrifying moment. She saw a gunshot victim in front of her home. And he started screaming, I've been shot. Can you please let me in your home? And I said, well, I can't let you in, but I can call for help. You know, at that moment, I didn't realize what was really going on. Vergara and her children were away in Houston for the weekend. So she says she felt helpless as she watched everything unfold in front of her door. Once, you know, he was laying there here, you know, blood over there. It was like, oh, he really did get shot, you know. And then that's when I made a call and I explained to her, please, I'm not home, but somebody's been shot at my doorstep. I had neighbors calling me, hey, you know, there's somebody laying in your bench. There's one in your bushes. Vergara was told the man in her yard survived. The Dallas Police Department says 19-year-old Jacoria Green died at the scene. An 18-year-old and two juveniles were also shot and taken to the hospital. Vergara says living next door to the short-term rental the past year has been miserable. One weekend it was calm. Another weekend it was, you know, party. 
partying. Another weekend, you'll come outside and you can smell weed. My kids weren't allowed to come out at a certain hour, so there was always chaos going on. You know, we try to call Airbnb. They said, well, you know, there's nothing we can do. Vergara says the listing for the home has now been taken down. I reached out to the company that owns the home. A spokesman for Main Street Renewal, the property management company, said in a statement, we are working closely with law enforcement as they investigate this tragic situation. Given that this is an active investigation, we have no further comment at this time. My multiple messages to Airbnb Monday have not yet been returned. It was always different neighbors. I didn't know who they were. You know, it was strangers to me. You know, and it's frustrating that you don't even feel safe or comfortable going outside your home. According to the Texas Neighborhood Coalition, this is the 10th shooting in Dallas involving short-term rentals since the organization started tracking it four years ago. To answer questions and provide clarity about the city's new policy regarding short-term rentals, Code Compliance has created a web page. We've put a link to that on our website at fox4news.com. Grapevine police say the man they arrested for killing a woman and dumping her body at Lake Grapevine confessed to the murder. Jennifer Holmes' body was found last week at the lake. Over the weekend, police arrested Daniel Birch. They say the two knew each other and were together the night of her murder. Fox 4's Amelia Jones spoke to a close friend of Holmes and joins us now live. Amelia. Heather, friends of Jennifer Holmes say she was going through a tough time after her house burned down. This is what led her to become close to the man who is now accused of her murder. It's, it's shocking. It's, I am at a loss. I just, there's no words to describe how any of us feel. It's Brittany Clark and Jennifer Holmes have been friends since ninth grade. Over the weekend, Clark got a text where she learned her friend was found dead. It's devastating to think and that none of us will ever talk or see or hear from Jen again. Holmes's body was found in Grapevine Lake on July 6th. She was shot twice in the head and two more times in the chest. On Sunday, Grapevine police announced they arrested 35-year-old Daniel Birch for her murder. You don't ever think a call like that's going to come in of, about your friend, your best friend. And it was, I, it makes me sick. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, someone with the Army Corps of Engineers reported hearing gunfire at 2.30 a.m. on July 5th near the spillway. That person witnessed a man get out of a white car and drive away. After Holmes' body was identified, investigators in Grapevine learned Holmes and Birch knew each other. They went to his home. The affidavit says he admitted he was with her on July 4th and that he drove her to the lake to calm her down after a night of drinking. Birch claimed she jumped out of the car. He got out too, holding his gun. And police say he admitted he shot her after he says she shoved him. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I still can't believe it. According to the affidavit, Birch admitted he put her back in his car, drove her to Grapevine Lake, and carried her to the water. Everybody will miss her loving, caring, loud and proud heart. And she loved her kids so much and her friends and family, and this is not how or what she deserved at all. Clark tells Fox 4 Holmes was staying with Birch until she could find a new home. The home she was at in Coppell burned down earlier this year. She was just that type of friend that you'll never forget. Clark says knowing Birch is in custody brings closure. We know he's behind bars and he's not going to be out to hurt anybody else. Records show Birch does not have any previous criminal history. Investigators say they found Holmes's cell phone and Birch's gun inside his car. Birch is currently being held at the Tarrant County Jail on a $150,000 bond. A 10-year-old boy, police say, was shot and critically injured by his mother's ex-boyfriend is receiving a lot of support from family and from friends. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. And I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Cody John Olson was shot several times on the 4th of July at a mobile home park in Denton. His mom's ex-boyfriend, 39-year-old Travis Rollins, is in jail, charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Fox Force Peyton Yeager talked with the boy's grandparents today. Peyton. Stephen, the 10-year-old, is in a medically induced coma. He has multiple broken bones, a collapsed lung, and a bullet lodged in his head. We want to warn you some of the images in this story are graphic. The photos of Cody John Olson in a Fort Worth hospital are jarring. 
The 10-year-old from Waxahachie is hooked up to tubes fighting for his life at Cook Children's after being shot six times. It's a miracle that he's alive. It is truly a miracle. He is the sweetest little boy you could ever meet. Vicki and Michael Cross feel helpless as their grandchild's quality of life is now in question. More than anger was helplessness because I couldn't help him. And that's a, that's a pretty uh, humbling feeling. 39-year-old Travis Rollins is accused of driving from Midlothian to Denton on the evening of July 4th and opening fire on a mobile home. Cody John and his mother were there helping a family member move. The Crosses say they're familiar with Rollins. He dated their daughter, Cody John's mother, but she recently broke up with him. Vicki Cross says Cody John idolized Rollins, considering him a father figure. And I can't imagine what little Cody John thought when he saw Travis come at him, what went through that baby's mind. He's a monster. Thursday, more than a week after the ambush, the mobile home is still riddled with bullet holes. Denton police say after Rollins shot the 10-year-old, he took off. But he was arrested just hours later in Duncanville on an unrelated warrant. Rollins now sits in the Denton County Jail facing aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. There's no rational explanation for this, and I just hope that justice is done and that he's locked up forever. Meanwhile, doctors were able to remove one bullet from Cody John's brain, but a second one will stay there forever. Vicki and Michael Cross say their grandson has more surgery scheduled. I know the closer I get to that hospital, I don't know what I'm going to see. I don't know what I'm going to hear. Each visit a reminder of the tough road ahead to recover. This is just incomprehensible. This sweet little boy is in a coma with his future very uncertain, clinging to life. This is not like... Rollins does have a lengthy criminal history, including, including two aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charges, one in 2004 and one in 2008, where he did serve jail time. Well, the cause of death for a Plano woman found dead in Lake Louisville last month is unclear at this hour, but her husband is sitting in the Collin County Jail this morning. He has not been charged with murder. Fox 4's Amelia Jones breaks down this case. 32-year-old Sarah Dudley was reported missing on June 24th. According to the arrest affidavit, on that day, Sarah's husband, Carlton Dudley, went to a neighbor's apartment to check on a cat. He told police this was around the same time Sarah left for work at Raw Sushi in Plano. Dudley told police Sarah walked to work to, quote, clear her head. She was also not able to drive because she was epileptic and needed medication, according to the affidavit. Coworkers told police Sarah never made it for her shift. The affidavit says that afternoon, Dudley decided to go kayaking at Lake Louisville in Hidden Cove Park, but his kayak wouldn't inflate. He told police he walked around the lake instead. Two days later, the affidavit says Sarah Dudley's body was found in the lake, stuffed into a black duffel bag suitcase. It feels so unreal, like, I don't even know what to say. Fox 4 spoke to Sarah's cousin, Brittany Weiskopf, after her body was identified. Sarah wouldn't hurt a fly on a wall, you know, like, she was the purest soul I know. The affidavit says police retrieved data from an ankle monitor Dudley was wearing from a previous case for aggravated sexual assault of a child in Frisco. The data showed he was in the water where Sarah's body was recovered. Dudley also described the exact duffel bag suitcase Sarah's body was found inside. He told police it was the only other thing missing from the apartment. This was enough for police to arrest and charge Dudley with abuse of a corpse. Sarah Dudley's family sent Fox 4 the following statement that says, quote, My family and I hope that Sarah's memory can be remembered as the vibrant person she was. We pray for justice to the full extent. Carlton Dudley's defense attorney sent Fox 4 the following statement that says in part, quote, Dudley is charged with, quote, abuse of a corpse. At this time, Mr. Dudley has not been charged with homicide, and the autopsy remains inconclusive. Amelia Jones, Fox 4 News.